right? And bouncing the legs and circle them around. And a few more side to side. Okay. And from there, you can just roll to the side, but I will normally rock to the sitting position and then transitioning forwards and stretching backwards. All right, bend and stretch. And then alternating three like a dog again, up behind. Yeah, my self practice is quite moving. Yeah, quite restless. Yeah. But there are times that I also do static ones. Yeah. But for the day, I'd like to do yeah mobility. All right, and then drop to your knees. You can fold the blanket. Yes, I will be doing my shir sasana. Yeah, I do my arm balance, upper back uh, work in the beginning of the session because towards the end I will be doing deep flexibility of the spine and the hips. All right, pressing, breathing in. You can just stay halfway. If you're not doing the heel stand, just remain on the forearms. Huh? Pull the shoulders back. You can loosen yeah, your tighter side there. My right shoulder tends to contract as I lift myself up. So adjust that elbow. As long as it feels good inside, you're well. You're fine. You're right. And then breathe. I stay here about five or ten mindful breathing. But I sometimes keep the shirsasana. Some days I'm not practicing it. Instead, I'll do arm balances, particularly the handstand. But for today, I'd like to do both. All right, and then coming down with control and into the floor. You kneel a bit and slide to side to side. So that increases the strength of my upper back and also the energization of the brain. Good. And then forward and do the alternating three-legged dog. Once more lifting and twisting. And then walking and marching the downward facing dog. All right, I will thread yeah, one knee through. Uh, so some static yeah, hip flexor stretching, rubbing from hip to hip. Okay, and then both legs in front. Right. And my Bharat Vajrasana. Yeah. Sometimes I would do a Kunchasana before I do my Bharat Vajrasana. Crossing one hand behind. You can just place that foot inside, yeah, without yeah, binding behind you. Yeah. Like this. Yeah. And then here, yeah, it's also a compound element. You're stretching the elbow. You can lightly look away. And stretching the collarbone, the neck and look to the back, and then shift forward to your wrist, and then circle around your hip joint. And then settle for a breath or two. You can keep that shoulder nice rubbing around the neck. All right, and tangle, and crossing. Good. And then at this point, um, I will be practicing flat already. Exhaling, all right. Push your way up. And then flowing to the back, all right. But I don't flip over, rather I'll do this and circle around. I tend to preserve my energy yeah, for the advanced ones later on. Sometimes I do a vinyasa, you know, but for me I feel this it's more opening. Yeah, I, I get to, you know, to gain access to those spaces and I will flip over that shoulder again. 
And then the other one, and I'll do it maybe one or two times per side. All right, and back to the middle, and a child's position. But stay, just angle my mat. All right, and then forward, and what you normally jump to, maybe a forward stand, or I jump up to the handstand, now, depending on how my hips and the body feels. I'll try to jump up to handstand. All right, and I'll try again. <laughs> And then here I'll just stay, maybe three breaths sometimes, and then come down, and then yes, flow, yeah, down the floor, and around in circles, yeah, and a bit of a side to side. All right, you can lift and then kick that leg, vibrating, yeah. Flip over the shoulder again, and then rub it, and the other one. All right, and back to the floor. And then sitting back to a light child stretch. This part of me is the tighter side. So just give me some you know, limitations. It hinders me from you know, lifting to my full potential. Yeah. So I do random stretching for that side. All right, then I settle. Okay, yeah. I feel like doing a hand press. My hips are quite loose, so I'd like to gain access to those deep pockets. And this yeah, is my way of preparation. Um, I'm not strong, actually, muscularly. So I need to really gain access to those deep pockets. And I use my tongue a lot in gaining yeah, potentials. Yeah, but it's light. Yeah, I don't push my muscles too hard. Rather, I use the space inside and the breath. And my tongue is really very active when I do my asana. And then <laughs> touch the ground. Yeah. Okay, and then walking the knees. Good. And then swinging them. Good. And I'll do a backflip. Yeah, easy ostrasana. Just to open yeah, the front of the body after yeah, those flexion. You can just, yeah, maybe do a supported one, yeah, or you can tuck the toes and walking the knees in the middle. And then rise, folding the hips slightly back, and then walking the knees. You can wave a bit of a spiral. All right, swinging and stepping to the back, yeah? And do the alternating three-legged dog. I do this a lot, yeah? Rotating around like a mandala in the hip just socket. All right, and then sitting, maybe I'll press, try, 
and to the floor in front. Yeah? And a mindful restoration, but keep moving the joints. Good. And then opposite leg bends. If this is intense, just cross it inside. Eh? Well, sometimes I will just hang loose here. Not too strict about the technicality of the um, the asana. Feel it more internally. Yeah, really those lines and spaces where <laughs> the body parts are attached. Yeah. Those are like organic uh, mudras, kriyas. You do it because your inner body feels it. So this is now where the asana becomes more than just a physical technique. They're a way for us to gain access to the energy pockets. Therefore, they become like mudras, organic way of accessing the energy channels. Like your body moves in crooked, yeah, random positions, spontaneous twitching, and rubbing around the joints. Because their energetic anatomy is so open, you can feel you know, where the energy is stuck inside. And by gaining access to those deep pockets, yeah, you free the body of stagnation. Therefore, you create lightness and space. So it's the advanced asana, for example, the handstand, the headstand, even later on as we do, as I do my deep back bends, they are just the expression of the inner body opening up. That's uh, the purpose of the asana, personally, yeah, in my self practice, I does I just don't do them for the sake of doing them. Yes, they um, benefit my health and my wellness, but mostly and the main reason why I practice the steep ones is for me to gain access to my energetic anatomy, and because later on I will use that openness during my meditation. All right, I'm crossing. Yeah, and tangling. Yeah. Uh, and then pressing. If you're not pressing, you can just tuck to the side. Eh? All right. And then loosen, circling around, finding side to side. You can lift. And then flipping that shoulder again. And the other one. Okay, and then back to the floor. Now let me try another round of the hand pressing, the hand standing. If you're not doing the handstand, you can do, for example, a bakasana or the bird pose. Okay, every time I talk, I lose it. Yeah, exhale, and then forward, and then down. Because if I, every time I do my arm balancing, my, my tongue is actually digging through the inner pockets of my mouth. And the moment I talk, you know, I lose the axis. All right. Okay, let me try and do a jump through between the hands and sit. Okay, and then down and up and down. Good. And I feel this too. We are fanning and twisting, rotating, and circling around. Okay, and this one is actually one of my favorites. Yeah, reaching over yeah, for a deep side stretch. Yeah, if this is intense, you can do a side angle position. Side angle position is this. But I like to do it lying down. Yeah. So I can also open the hip and then 
do some internal and external adjustment of my hip joint. One more per side. Yeah, shake that leg up. Uh, maybe you know, hold a bit longer, settling it. You can hook one hand over. Climb back to the middle, yeah. Up and down across, rocking up and down. And you can just tuck to the side. I'll try to press this all the way up. Behind, maybe a flip. And your dog. Yeah, free like a dog. Alternate. I do this a lot too. But if you have, for example, yeah, tight low back, you, know, you might just want to walk your feet. Yeah? Okay. And one more press, handstand. I love doing this because this it's like very compound element of working on strength, balance. And it's a good way for like opening yeah, the inner body and adjusting, matching.